from the northwest. We have lots of feedback from around the country, and they're now looking at the detail. And the small amounts of money are becoming available now through the big society capital. It's being handled by the lottery at the moment. But the whole thing, we hope, will be up and running very shortly. And there's significant amounts of money. They're talking about 600 million, I think, initially. Um, there, so it's not a small amount of money. Um, transforming local infrastructure, that's about infrastructure support and I know that um, CellNet were heavily involved in putting the uh, lead, I think, on the proposal. don't know if you've got the results yet. I don't no, think we're hoping nice. you were going to give us a date. <laughs> oh, it's soon, isn't it? It's it's we, January. Were, we were expecting you to give us the good news. Oh, yeah. I wish I could, I don't know, but well, unfortunately, I'm, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> probably, I don't know. Um, but there is a process, isn't there, at the moment, yeah. a very competitive process. Um, the Red Tape Task Force, um, if you want to go on the website, there's loads of things happening there. Slow, but it's, you know, people have identified, local communities and individuals have identified where the red tape holds them back, um, charities, social enterprises, and work is going on going on that. Um, there's work going in terms of a review of the Charities Act, which again will impact, I think, on some of you. And do take the opportunity to contribute to that over the coming months. Um, the criminal records, because and that has been an issue um, and an attempt then again to um, make sure that we make it well maintaining um, safety and security, but making it easier for people to um, work with children um, and for the checks to be carried out quickly and simply. So, massive stuff, I could go on forever about that, but that's probably the, the main slide. The fact that there is a lot happening. We are very keen, one of the reasons I'm here today is that we are keen to hear people's views locally. That's, I suppose, why I've got this job. Um, these are new roles, there are eight of us around the country. And the Cabinet Office is very keen to get the information back, not just to make the policy decisions um, centrally. So, um, I think I've really covered that one. That's a bit more on the Localism Act. Um, a practical one that I had a look at the other week was the um, people up in Cumbria have been quite active in terms of a lot of the localism agenda. A lot of naval planning going on in Cumbria. But they bought a pub in one of the villages up there, and that was the community coming together to buy their local asset, the, the, the local pub. But there's going to be opportunity for lots of other buildings and um, assets to become available to people. Um, it, will, it will be up to communities you know, to determine their future and their own assets. Um, open Public Services White Paper, that's just a slide that tells you a bit more about the principles. Um, and again, you know, there's, there is an element of cynicism, I'm not going to deny that in the press about some of this. But in terms of the work that we're doing as civil servants, um, it's being driven forward. Um, it, it is happening. It's not that we're coming across insurmountable barriers. I think it's just a complex scenario, um, the public services one, uh, where we're going to, we've got um, real ministerial priority there. Um, and I think we will begin to see quite significant changes this coming year. And then I've got in here an example of um, a bit more detail of the community first one. Just to give you a feeling of the money that the government's spending, um, it's about communities that we've chosen the wards around the country that met a certain criteria of being um, areas that came up relatively high in terms of deprivation, but also were areas where there was an increase in unemployment. So it's, it's come up with a mix of wards. I think there are one or two in Blackpool, um, and there are several in Lancashire. But the idea is to get funding to that level to give an endowment opportunity. And this is that opportunity for people to actually um, donate funding. And the community foundations are actually working now with philanthropists to, to look at the contribution they might make to it. And, and other um, organisations, I think ASDA has got commitments to, to this one. So some of our big companies are looking possibly to put funding in. And it's the idea of making change from the bottom up rather than top down. Um, it's a different way, I suppose, to try and approach regeneration to what has happened in the past where the government's put maybe large amounts in. This government doesn't have large amounts to put in as that decision has been made. So it's about putting small amounts in that may actually lead to significant change. 
That's one example, but I could have chosen lots of others, I suppose. I just wanted to show you that some very practical things happen. And what's been really good is that you need to get, I think it's a panel of eight people is required from the local community in these areas, and lots of people are coming forward to do this. They don't get any payment, they don't get anything, you know, anything formal back, but they are actually willing to put in that time and energy, and um, they're making that commitment of their own um, individual skills and time. So, just back to our role and what I do, um, that's what we do across Whitehall. Um, we are the thought leaders, and sometimes when you see stuff in reports, it comes out of, we've got a very a group of team that are very bright, of, I suppose academics and people, and they've been doing uh, the nudge stuff, the behavioural um, change stuff, which is about not you know, putting laws in place or putting the regulatory stuff in place, but the things that actually encourage people to behave differently. Um, and they've published a number of things over the last year, which got quite a bit of coverage actually. But there are some big issues about people's health in this country and about how we, how we you know, to what extent the government or any uh, body um, becomes directly involved in people's health. But it's, it's a big issue because the cost to the health service are, are massive in terms of some behaviours. So it's those really difficult questions. So we do that. Um, we do a lot of support. Uh, we've got um, quite a number of strategic partners in the voluntary community sector, not as many as there were in the past, as some of the EUR experts will know. Um, but we do work closely with some of the big um, national organisations who link into local more local organisations and provide some support and funding. Um, delivery of flagship projects, so those are the sort of um, high profile ones. And then last one, um, helping civil society seize the opportunity. So it's you know it's, it's about what is it that will be really useful and, and any feedback on that will be great. I better move on because I can see time's passing. And then um, our objectives quite simple ones. They would be easier to run a charity or social enterprise, so that's quite, you know, that's quite a basic priority for me. Making it easier to work with the state and getting more resources to the voluntary community social enterprise sector. So those are fundamental priorities that we've got um, and that our ministers have got. How can we work together? Well, that sort of feedback and my contact details are at the end, so you can put this on your website or something mm -hmm. like that. You, you'll have my contact details. If you'd like to get in touch with me, do, do feel free to do so. Just remember there's only one of me, so I might not get back to you immediately. It might take me a day or two. Um, what I am gathering at the moment is case studies. And I did think today that there might be one or two of you that might have some good case studies of what you were doing. You know, some good examples of social enterprises and the, the developments and the expansion at the moment of the work that you're doing. Um, we've got 100 of these case studies so far. We are a bit choosy, but um, you know, it's, it's success stories within the current economic climate. People are really making a difference. Um, and our, our minister is very interested in them, and we're probably going to go public with them, so we'll put them all on the website as examples of big society in action, um, civil society in action. Um, so anybody would like to talk to me about that, I've got, but it's very simple, um, 500 words that we need to put together, and then it goes, it's not just me who decides, it goes to a little group who will moderate on them, but um, a very good way to get your message out to a wider audience, I think. Um, those are the things. We're interested in barriers and successes. I'm interested in success, I suppose, but we have to look at the barriers, don't we? So, talk about the barriers. Really keen to promote big society awards, because that's a way to get your organisation known as well. Case studies. We're interested where things are working well, maybe where public um, services are doing good things, the way that they're working with you together. And we're interested in innovation. We're interested in the use of IT and um, new ways of doing things rather than sticking with it, you know, the way we've always done it. Because we're having to really look at change, I think, at the moment. We're, we're living in a changing environment. And so those, those are the sort of ones that we're looking for. And then finally, I think I've done it just within time. Um, that's my contact details. And they're the, all together, as I said, and just saying to us around the country who do this sort of toing and froing really between, I suppose I spent a couple of days a month in London and the vast majority of it actually up here. 
So, thank you very much. I hope you found that useful. Well, yes, thank you very much, Sheila. And, and just a uh, personal thank you for being so accessible. And we wanted you to come, you didn't hesitate. Yeah. Thanks for that. But be, before we uh, wrap it up, questions. Look, look, I mean, it's an opportunity for you all to. Um, you won't get this opportunity perhaps that often. So please use the opportunity. Have you any questions that you'd like to uh, put to Sheila? Come on, you must have some. Clive will start off. Well, I was thinking about Chris White's bill and what the progress is on that to make tendering more and to include this clause about social benefit. Can you tell us what the progress is on that? I don't know where it is up to exactly now. There was something before Christmas, wasn't yeah. that, on it? Um, no, I don't like the... Well, I think that's I'll be bit... honest, but yeah. I'll get, I will get back to you with <laughs> the details <laughs> on it. Um, I mean, I think it's still going through, isn't it, the whole process? Well, I guess exactly so. Exactly where it's up to, I don't know. Well, I think it would be... You've got, like, five segments on one of those diagrams. Yeah. And I think this could be a sixth one, because it would enable social enterprises to compete more effectively yeah. than they currently do because local authorities don't always have this social benefit clause and I think they will have to have in the future. It's a yeah. big thing for us. Mm. It is, it is, I'd just like to reinforce that a little bit because um, for the last five years we've been saying the same thing to local authorities. You know, uh, there's look locally to um, to procure uh, don't just look you know because you you think you've got to look across Europe for your procurement there could be a lot of homegrown organizations that can supply these things and that should be factored in somewhere mm. in other words you know you, well you know the story mm. and so we're very keen this Chris Chris White uh, uh, has pioneered if you like this uh, route to enshrine it in the law. So we're all keen in the social enterprise sector to see whether this actually does get get through the system. Kevin. Hey Sheila. Again, um, I was fortunate enough to sit through your presentation. Yeah, I'm sorry about sitting no, 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 I, I, Well I've picked up on things that I didn't hear the, the first time around or didn't pick up on the first time around. Um, it's Kevin Winkler from Envision here. Um, and you came to our Chief Officers of Voluntary Sector meeting. Uh, and gave us a similar, not the same presentation. But I did pop up at that point about the IT issues and the um, using IT in a different way. Um, here at Envision, we uh, operate with uh, 2,500 clients who are visually impaired, so audio technology is important to us. Uh, and I'm fortunate enough to have somebody in the audience who worked with us, uh, John Rudkin, um, who worked with us on our uh, project back in 2005 where we used internet radio to deliver our talking news. One of the things that restricted us at that time, and is still quite restrictive, is the lack of broadband supply across the country.